hesitate to push call. my. Don't hesitate to call on this if you need if anything goes wrong. I appreciate it. I'm let you get in these few minutes of, uh, of time. Please turn yourself off. I feel I've gotten to know you very well through many other sources, reading about you and talking to a lot of people about young working on books about you, as you perhaps know. And it's, it's, it's primarily a spiritual record, Mr. President, of you. And, uh, and the and it's set in the context of the world events and politics and, and so forth. And just coming to grips with, uh, you know, can a man in your own connection? The governor of the country that seems to be as well as we're in this world. And I'm, I'm trying to deal with that. And that's, that's where I am right now. And, I would just love to ask you a couple of questions if I might as well take a lot of your time. I, uh, first of all, uh, want to uh, acknowledge that I think your administration has made a significant difference in the United States. So I start from there. But I would just like to have you tell me in a couple of minutes how you feel about your first term so far. With the country, turning the country around and so on. Well, I have felt for a long time that the people of this country were hungry for what you might call a spiritual revival. Yes. Return to values, mm -hmm. to things they believed in and held dear. And uh, I always remember that Teddy Roosevelt said this office was a bully pulpit. Right. And I decided that if it was possible for me to help in that revival, that um, I feel very strongly that uh, when you come down to the very tough questions yeah. and the tough problems, yes. you have to ask yourself uh, not whether it's political or whether it gains some mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself what, to the best of my ability, do I conceive as being right or wrong, yes. best for the people. Yes. The decision that way. Yes, sir. And I find that uh, uh, you don't age as quickly if you do that. <laughs> that's right. That's right, Mr. President. If you, uh, this is not a loaded question. I had, I didn't come in here to, to ask loaded questions. So if I say it in a way that sounds like I'm trying to set you up for something, I am not. And I want to put you to rest about that. But um, uh, assuming. Uh, no, I don't want to even say it that way. Looking ahead to the future, uh, uh, I, as I say, I believe that you have your, your administration has, has made some change in the country. I think it's obvious. I sense it out in the land as I talk to the people. If nothing else, there's a certain confidence out in the land that I feel that it wasn't there uh, three or four years ago. Um, but do, how would you press forward? I, I assume that you do not believe that the job uh, that you'd like to see the major turnaround in the country, the, uh, the change of many institutions and so forth. I, I presume you don't believe that's fully completed yet. Would you do anything different, more intensely, or anything in, in, in the future from this time forward? And I'm not talking about whether you're going to run again or anything like that. Well, uh, if I had that opportunity, uh, so far, we've had to be dealing with immediate problems. We've had to be dealing with the recession, with the, well, the world the way it is, and the trouble spots that, you know, where we're involved, I, and I believe involved, because it is in our national interest to be involved. Yeah. Um, if there was more time, I would like to feel that we could then make some of these things that we've accomplished uh, attempting to reduce the size of government and so forth, that we could uh, uh, make them more permanent and install them so that uh, they would be around for a while. Yes, yes. And I think of them actually in terms of getting this government back. This is something new, or getting the government back uh, to where it once was and where it should be. Mm -hmm. For example, I believe very strongly that uh, one of the great secrets of our individual freedom is the fact that we were created uniquely in all the world to be a federation of sovereign states. Mm -hmm. 
As a matter of fact, I remember in 1932, uh, the Democratic platform upon which Franklin Delano Roosevelt ran, yes. at that time, one of its planks had to do with restoring to states and local communities the authority and autonomy that had been unjustly seized by the federal government. Yes. And it also called for a reduction in the power and the cost and size of the federal government. Well, our federalism program is based on that same idea, of course. That platform uh, was never implemented, yes. even though they won the election. And uh, I was a Democrat at the time. I voted <laughs> that way. But uh, yes, I think there are things that can be, I would like to see things completely permanent, of course, but that would, would put the government into a, a different basis, a different direction. You're optimistic, sir, about the possibilities of, of making those things more permanent. Uh, I, I, use, I, I use terminology, perhaps incorrectly, of, of some of the institutions of government being, you know, changed enough so that whether, you know, whether you're here or not, that they wouldn't be turned around quickly. Are you optimistic about that? Yes, I really am, because I'm optimistic about the people of this country. Yes. We started a thing called the Private Initiative, and this was to persuade uh, private groups in the private sector to do many things that over recent years we've just taken for granted only the government could or should do. And the response has been unbelievable. All over this country, we have here now, we have a permanent office here of, for the private initiative, right. the private sector, right. this type of work. They have a computer with more than 3,000 programs in it that are being performed out in the country someplace yeah. in communities and states by private enterprise groups, local government groups, yeah. in, from neighborhood groups yeah. on up to tremendous size yeah. undertakings. Yes. Uh, to give you an example of that, one day in a ceremony out here in the Rose Garden, a little nun uh, here temporarily from Ghana where she has a, a clinic uh, there, a medical base out there in the, in the uh, undeveloped country. She whispered to me that her commissary, her, for helping the hungry there, that they just were in desperate need of flour. And I whispered back I would see what we could do. And I came in and I called our private initiative office, just told about the situation. They called back in an hour and said 3,000 pounds of flour were on the way to her commissary. That's the way it should be now. That's the way it should be now. Let me just shift one gears going quickly to another arena for you, sir, if I might just, uh, on the matter of optimism. Are you optimistic about, about dealing with the Soviet Union in the, in the future? And I'm not, again, no setup. I don't have anything in mind. I'm just thinking about, uh, you know, the, the international area, which I happen to think centers around so much about dealing with the Soviet Union. Are you, how do you feel about the future? Well, I think the tragedy of the airplane revealed to many people that some of the things that I had been trying to call to their attention were true. true that you don't deal with them as, <clears throat> and seeing them in a mirror image. But I also believe that they're very practical uh, about their own welfare. And I have an optimism based on the fact that, uh, the idea that if we can show them, not appealing to them as this is the nice thing to do, show them that they can actually be better off and that their own safety and their own uh, uh, living standards mm -hmm. and all could be benefited by a different approach than they presently have. Right. That uh, peace would be very beneficial to them. Yes. And I just believe that the practicalities are such that uh, if we can make them uh, see some of these points, mm -hmm. <coughs> they might turn not because they, uh, uh, they've had a change of character, but <coughs> to, see it's to their own advantage <laughs> yeah. to do these that's, things. That's, that's, that's fine. Let me just stop by conclude by just telling you something that, uh, first of all, I, my boss is Pat Robertson, who I think you know yes. him well, and you've met a few times, and uh, he just sends his warmest regards to you. And I, I want to 
wanted to share a little anecdote with you on Fridays. We have our entire company, which consists of about 1,300 people and about 300 students as well, who gather together every Friday for a prayer meeting. And I know personally that they prayed for you and your administration at great length today. And they do that regularly. And they, they would like for you to know that. A little cameraman said to me, he knew I was coming to see you. And he said, Bob, will you tell the president that we're praying for him? And I said, he knows it. He says, I really mean it. Would you tell him we're praying for us? But would you tell him thanks? Because I happen to believe very firmly and deeply in intercessionary prayer. I know you do. And I, I think that I feel the strength because that is going on. It is. And people are doing that. Yes. And I've been told by others. That yes, I know you have. So would you give him my heartfelt thanks? I'll do that. And you might tell him a little anecdote from me. When I first became governor, as Ed Meese knows, it, it seemed the situation was pretty much like it was here at the federal government. Uh, it seemed as if every day when I, every morning when I sat down at my desk, there was somebody in front of the desk to tell me we had another problem. Mm -hmm. And it became an almost irresistible physical urge of mine. I really mean this to turn and look over my shoulder as if well, there's someone maybe I can turn to right. and say, yeah. hey, yeah. we have a problem. Right. And then one day, uh, I just realized that I was turning in the wrong direction. And I started looking up instead of over my shoulder. Right. And uh, things immediately got better. Yeah. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. Mr. President, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you and I love you as a brother in the Lord very much. Thank you very much. I hope that's not pretentious and presumptuous for me. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Bob, thanks. I'll see you back in the office. Yeah. I think we have somebody who will uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to go right out through the office. the departure.